Well, we're out at the grain bin. It's uh, March 5th. This has been a long process. There's been a lot of uh, detours, let's say. Uh, the, there's wheat in here. It's food grade. It's been tested. I have a contract signed. It's going to Grand Forks, North Dakota. There's about 2,000 bushels in here. Um, it meets all the requirements for food grade. I got a decent price um, with the help of a grain broker who ended up being net better than doing it myself. So at this point, we were going to load it yesterday, and I've never unloaded from this bin. This bin was three and a half years in the making. And I got to say, all along the way, everybody I talked to is very sure of themselves about how this is all going to fit together. And they, with 100% confidence, describe what they've done as being perfect, but somehow everything else is somebody else's fault. And I'm running into that a lot. Um, when I went to unload this yesterday, initially I thought there was an electrical problem because the, the breakers kept tripping. Uh, it turns out this motor here, seven and a half horsepower single phase, was seized up and it was causing the breaker to trip. And this motor here drives the horizontal auger, it goes into the floor, under the floor in the bin, as well as a vertical unload auger that dumps into the truck. So I called the electrician, he came out here last night and looked at it, or talked to me, and then came out first thing this morning, took the motor off, had it tested, apparently water got in it somehow, not through any ordinary route, and it froze in there, and it froze around the shaft. These things are supposed to be weatherproof, and this has never been run other than 10 seconds when they first hooked up the wiring. The other problem we had was the location of these switches and the documentation about how they're used was really not clear or satisfying, so I had him with the help of suggestions of the trucker come up with a user-friendly design. The, late, the next thing to figure out, with no help from my representative, who I think has been representative, who's kind of overstretched at the moment. He's helpful, but he's not available. I called Souk up because the manual I have is for the bin, not for the auger. I have a parts manual for the auger and an installation manual, but not an operator's manual. And the operator's manual for the bin doesn't show you which levers here. And every one of these systems is slightly different because there's a variety of sumps. So initially, I'll show you in there, it started to unload from the center. You can see where the center is empty. And then there'll be there's kind of a divot forming right about here where there's a sump down below in that horizontal unload auger tube. So it'll next take grain from there and it'll drain it all the way down. So there'll be a trench all the way to the edge here. And that adjustment is made by reattaching these pins in different locations. And there's an emergency sump. So trying to get that all straightened out, and there were some parts missing. I had to do some adjusting on this rod to get the pins to fit. So when they put the, the assembly together, when they built it, they had it off a little bit. Um, so I got that sorted out. And um, got a fair amount of wheat in the bin or in the truck. The next thing will be to run it. Till I get all the sumps emptied, this whole line emptied right above the auger. This auger goes from here all the way to the center of the bin. So at this point, uh, it's a 36 foot diameter bin. So this is probably a 20 foot long auger, horizontal auger. Once that's emptied down to the floor along that 16 foot internal length of auger, there is a power sweep that basically is this lever here down on the bottom, there's a clutch that I have to engage. First turn off the motor up here, the bin auger, then re-engage that, and then that will start working its way all the way around. It'll spin around. It's, it's fixed in the center, and there's a wheel out here. There's a clutch that's grabbing on the outside, and it's spinning, and it'll kind of, it's a radius, and it's an auger along that radius, and it's taking grain I'll maybe make a video about it. You guys have probably seen this before, but if you never have, it's kind of cool. Um, it's sucking grain from the all along this radius to the center sump, where the center auger will then take it under the floor 
to this auger then up and out. So that's kind of a two-person job to be able to tell where how much grain is in the truck and you know so I'm waiting for the trucker to show up here in about a half hour but I thought I'd come out and shoot a video. Um, I think this is been a lot of drama around this just sort of all out of proportion to the yeah it's a fair amount of money but at the same time the effort involved and the I won't say problems but just obstacles thrown up have have been pretty um remarkable I would say for something that's new and should be working on the other angle to this was the whole I got a propane tank out here because I thought I had to preheat the air in a propane tank with a differential thermostat installed, which is down there, the bottom, that little gray box. I don't know if you see it. It introduces heat into the plenum here between the fan, which is powered by a 20 horsepower motor, and the plenum goes under the floor. Well, the problem is there's a, according to Sukup, there's a differential. This air flowing through here isn't even, so you get differential in heat applied and the grain won't dry properly. It'll dry very unevenly. So I discontinued the, the propane and just went with air drying. And thankfully, global warming, global chaos, environment, environmental catastrophe, however you want to describe it, we've been 20 to 30 degrees above normal here for the whole winter. It's been the warmest winter on record. Normally, 5th of March, there's still three feet of snow on the ground. And cumulative to date, we've probably had maybe 10 inches of snow this whole winter since, you know, November when the snow normally first comes. So it's just been an extraordinary year in that sense. Um, there's minimal ice coverage on the Great Lakes. I'm 100 miles south of Lake Superior here, on the, of, of Duluth, Minnesota, basically, with the southwestern tip of Lake Superior, southwestern corner. Lake Superior but um, so the warm weather has allowed me to run the fan without any supplemental heat it's been up to 60 degrees Fahrenheit which is more or less what 15 Celsius yeah about 15 degrees Celsius which is more than enough to dry this down because initially my wheat was at 14.7 percent and now it's at 12.2 and the, and the spec to sell is at 13 and a half but it's really difficult to monitor it that precisely. Um, that's a whole other story. So I investigated all that, or not investigated, but had a lot of phone calls about that. So that's enough complaining. Uh, it's not really a complaint. It's just more that um, these things take a lot of time and energy and effort to to understand what's going on. And a lot of people I found in this world can't really tell me like the electricians and the truckers they're out here looking at this auger trying to figure out the pins and they've been around it forever but they it's not intuitive is what i'm saying um so it just takes time to figure these things out and uh, like i said this is the first time so i'm hoping other times will go a little bit better well, this video has gone on long enough but i stay out here and there's a shot of the house